What was that? I think Sherry shot the pig. Whew. I think I got him. Three questions now that are left. Chops, cutlets, or adobo? Okay, well I wasn't quite sure how to dress the pig. But I decided on cutlets. Aloha and welcome. It's a beautiful day. Even when it's raining, we can appreciate what the rain does around here. It helps things to grow. It nurtures the plants. It fills up those catchment tanks. So I love it. Rain or shine, it's a beautiful day. So welcome to our show. We have so much here that we want to share with you about how to make your farm more productive and how to be happier. As you may know from some of our last episodes, we had a major pig epidemic here. They were just invading the property and eating everything in sight. That problem has been resolved. Things have been replanted. We're going to go and revisit the front garden and see what's going on. So today, I have prepared myself for a wonderful new adventure with my new outfit which includes this lovely corset that I got at the KL Recycling Center. It is so nice to see the little fern shoots and a whole leaf have come back now since the pigs destroyed it. Remember it was so barren and dry, everything had shriveled up. I'm amazed how well it's coming back. Thank you, Rain. I am happy. This is my happy garden dance. This is my happy garden home. And look, we have a ripe pineapple. I don't believe it. Nobody ate it. And of course, because of the rain, you know, it, it kind of fell over a little bit. But look at here. And look how cute and little. So it just popped right off with my handy hoe. And look, we have a couple of little weeds here. So I'm just going to pull them up and put them some of these little seeds in here and then some of the donkey nuggets to help nurture it. It's always fun to plant because then you can watch it come up and see how everything is growing because your garden is like a microcosm of who you are. And if you're planting and tending your garden well, your life is going to be better. And if you can make your life better, you can make somebody else's life better. So let's all tend our gardens. We don't need to have virtual or imaginary gardens here on Hawaii Island. We can have real gardens. We can even, no matter where we live, it's probably easier just to put it in the basket. We can even pick our own cilantro, grow our own herbs. And here in Hawaii, we have pineapples. Oh, I love it. Pumpkins are coming up. Remember how little they were last time we saw them? I think it's time for another espresso bean. Okay, let's get one of those. Mmm, these are yummy. If you've ever seen these in the health food store, and you're having one of those days, it's like, oh, I don't know if I'll be able to make it to the end of the day. Go, and all you need is one of these. Oh, they're awesome. Oh, the banana trees are getting ready to do some pruning. Oh, look, we have a guava. Mmm, mmm. We have so many guavas that come off of one tree because we mulch and we fertilize it. So the pineapples are doing good, the peas. I am so happy. I am happy. <coughs> okay, what else we got? Well, I just picked this pepper. It's, it's a real bell pepper. We have a lot of pork left over in the freezer. And on top of the avocados that we have growing and our brand new cute little pineapple, isn't that adorable? and our guava. Don't know if we'll have that for breakfast or not. And the pepper. And the cilantro. And we've been getting little eggs. Now these little eggs from the free range chickens, which are not easy to get, are significantly smaller than the bigger eggs. So we might be able to have two eggs and then take the yolk out of one of them, which would make it a lot healthier. 
if it's at all possible for you in your garden to grow what you eat, then you are way ahead of the rest of the world because most of the problems in our society stem from using things that contain hormones or chemicals or preservatives. Things like that can really affect your health as well as... Rudy, that's being really noisy. So here's how you separate a yolk. You just separate it like that. He's waiting, he's waiting for the, the yolk and some more eggshells. There you go. Because the egg whites are really good for you. But the egg yolks contain quite a bit of fat. So there you go, Rudy. That's one of your intended offsprings. We'll add that there. I'm going to just put this together with... We're going to make something I invented. I didn't find the recipe for this. I just kind of discovered it on my own with whatever ingredients I had laying around. I'm going to be cooking in this little electric skillet. Do you know that you can make just about everything that you need to eat in an electric skillet? All you need is electricity or some power source, a little bit of olive oil. You can make a fabulous breakfast. I don't know how we fit all those pork things in the freezer. So we have a few pieces here that we're going to add to our dish. The dish doesn't actually have a name yet. So maybe some of you viewers can write in, tell me what it is. And we can put that on the next show. I love getting all the comments from all of you. So we've put some peppers and onions and mushrooms in here. And we've got some olive oil. So we'll spread that around a little bit. Put the cover on it and see how that, that cooks up. It's so nice to cook things that you grow. It makes you so happy and it makes you feel better too. These are one of the most beautiful avocados in the world. I'm so lucky to have avocados growing on my property because when I was a little girl, you know that game that you play when you're a kid and people go, well, if you were if you were stranded on a desert island and you could only have one thing, what would it be? And all the other kids would say, well, my dolls or, you know, my puppy or something. But I always, this is what I always said was, if I could only have one thing, it would be avocados or better yet, an avocado tree. And it's almost like my dream has now come to fruition. I have more avocados than I know what to do with. So all my friends get avocados. If you're in the area, give me a holler. You'd be welcome to some of the avocados because there's no way I can eat all of them. There just is no way, which was kind of part of the dream, I suppose. So I like to slice the avocado and then just scoop it out with a spoon. And if, if you can do it that way and just sort of spread it around, it makes a lovely little design on the plates. Cut up the tomato now. How's that doing in there? Pretty good. My, my chickens are so happy because whenever I make breakfast, I just toss everything over the side and they get their treats. So they're happy about that. Oh, I almost forgot to put this pepper in with the other peppers. I prepared the peppers last night for our dish that we're cooking so that I wouldn't spend a lot of time getting that put together. I also like tossing pepper plants over the side because then the chickens go walking around and they plant them for me. Yep, it's sizzling away. See how nicely that's coming along? You're just gonna toss that around a little bit. Then, egg in there, kind of scramble it up nicely, put the pork in which has been previously cooked. We're just going to warm that up. Come back in a minute and see how that's doing. I have to find a lot of ways to use the pork because <laughs> I grew up not eating pork. I haven't, I've not started eating pork until I moved to the Big Island and there was so much of it. So, you know, it's kind of a new phenomenon for me. I almost, I almost didn't know what to do. So we're gonna cut this pineapple up. Look at how nice this is. And we can replant the top. 
So if somebody asks you, what do you want if you only had one thing on a desert island? Pineapple plant, that might be a good choice. I'm just gonna turn this egg over. Electric skillets cook very quickly. So if you're messing around with a campfire, it can take like, I don't know, 10 times as long. I'm gonna get the cilantro ready too. Nothing like having cilantro on your eggs in the morning. So I'm gonna put that on the side, kind of make it a little salad kind of side dish for breakfast. And last but not least, we're just going to warm up a tortilla. Tortilla gives it a kind of a Mexican flavor. It's cooking away in there. Should be done soon. In fact, I think what we're gonna do is just turn it off and let the heat surround it. And whatever's in there is gonna finish cooking for us. Pineapple. Oh, I think the chickens are waiting for the pineapple. Where's our pineapple, Mom? You promised us pineapple because they were really good chickens because they could have easily gone out there and decimated this pineapple. Now, it's hard to imagine that an entire pineapple, when you cut it up, turns out to only be this big. But that's what you get when you grow a mini pineapple. It's what I like to call my very own personal pineapple. So there's that. Okay, chickens, you've been good, good chickens. There you go. Pineapple for you. And we have our whatever you want to call this. And now it's been fully cooked. We're just going to put it inside the tortilla and probably have enough for several of these. You want to put cheese on top. Oh, I hear somebody that's ready. Somebody's ready. Where's my pork, Mom? And then you just pour a little of this green verde sauce on the top, and you have your own little pork breakfast taco. There it is. And be sure not to touch the sides of the pan um, when it's still in the cooling down period because it can be rather warm. Yes, Chili, we're coming. We'll be, we'll be right there. Okay. So there it is, there's your breakfast pork taco, and it, it'll go lovely on this. I, I, I could probably just put it right on the plate here, right now, couldn't I? It's, it's kind of big, so I'm not sure I could fold it over, but there's a lovely breakfast for all of you. We grew most of this. I didn't make the tortilla, but I could have, maybe on another program. We're gonna go see Chili Dog now. He's been such a good boy and so patient. you piece of pork it's because you're such a good boy wait can you sit can you sit good boy he's gonna get his pork he's like i got my pork i'm so happy about the pork <laughs> mommy can we play i love to play you know how much i love to play i want to play i want to play right now here chili look go get the ball go get the ball go get the ball chili go get the ball you can't come on you're so excited he says i'm so happy mama i'm so happy he's such a happy dog i love this dog I don't know what I'm gonna do without this dog. This dog helps keep the pigs away. And he's he's always in a good mood no matter what's going on. So he's gonna help me. We're gonna trim some invasives. Make sure the pigs don't come back. He's been doing a good job of that. Okay, Chili, you gotta settle down. He, I think he still smells the pigs. I wanted to talk a little bit about invasive species because Hawaii Island is home to more invasive species than anywhere else in the world. We got feral pigs, strawberry guava, fire tree, fire ants, fire vines, cokey frogs, mongoose, biting fly, salvinia, sockmouth catfish, glory bush, gorilla go, Himalayan blackberries, ivy gourd. The list goes on and on and on. False kava, fruit flies, mosquitoes, myconia. And the truth is, is that there's at least another 50 that I haven't even mentioned to you. Stop it. He still smells the pigs. I'm worried about him. And so it's up to us. It's up to us to try to keep the invasives out. And so keep trimming, keep walking around, looking for things that are growing on your property and keep it in tow because you know what happens if you call the Department of Agriculture, the USDA? Nothing. Nothing happens. So, but if you try to get on an airplane, try to get on an airplane with a banana. The, 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 the agricultural police will track you down with their guns drawn and then they'll handcuff you. But all these other species are allowed to come into our island 
because the big companies, I don't need to name names, you know who they are, they sell you plants, they don't even check them. And that's how things like cokey frogs, well maybe not feral pigs, but that's how the cokey frogs really got started. And that's a problem, it's going to be us to take care of it. It's just going to be up to us. Brown violin spider, gorsh, brown snakes, rubber vine, smoke bush, snowflake coral. The list goes on and on. Oh, chili dog. Chili, chili, come back. Chili. I don't know. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Chili, come back. Chili. <laughs> over me oh my goodness sakes oh i was seriously underdressed for this ah i gotta take a shower i've got to take a shower oh my goodness oh there's nothing i can find that's gonna work on these things this is terrible i hate fi ah! they're awful they're just awful oh my god they're terrible what am i gonna put on there oh i don't know let's see maybe some of this Hydrogen peroxide, see if this works. No, not working, still stinging. Hey, maybe I'll try this. Rubbing alcohol, is this working? Ah! No, not working, not working. <laughs> oh my God, how about this? Witch hazel, not even close. I don't know what to do. I am seriously unprepared for this. Good grief. <coughs> this is not helping, nothing is helping. Oh my gosh, fire ants. It's got to be one of the worst things ever. Just awful. If, oh, everybody, if you've got fire ants, do something about them. I don't know what. And I guess from now on, when I go out in the jungle, I better, I better be better prepared. So I was seriously, seriously unprepared for this one. Good grief. Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh, this is the worst bites I've ever had in my life. These are terrible. I wonder, maybe I can just get a big anteater. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I've heard stories of people that have found fire ants in their garden. And, and then they couldn't even work in their garden anymore because they thought they would just go away on their own accord. And they didn't. So, so I encourage all of you. Do something about the fire ants. Don't and and be sure to dress properly when you go outside. So cover yourself from from head to toe now, and don't just take it for granted that they're not going to be there. They were in the vines, and I I'm, I'm glad I found them. Ah, but it's awful. Oh, there it's, it's awful. It's an awful, awful sting. Be sure you wear your gloves. Make sure your boots cover you. Long sleeves. Oh gosh. Okay, well, I'm, I'm still having a happy day. I am, I am happy. I will find Chili Dog. I will take care of these fire ants. I will put on my crown because I am a princess. My manicure is still fine. I gotta go find that dog now. Oh, Chili! Chili, come back! Oh, Barbara, oh. have you seen Chili Dog? Oh my gosh. No. I think I'm stuck with the fire ants. Have you ever been stuck with oh, fire ants? It's awful. I've got to go find Chili Dog. I didn't see him on the trail. Oh, I've got to come in looking for him. Oh, look with you. Want to look with me? Sure. Oh, thank you. Chili! Chili Dog! Chili! Chili! Come on, Chili! Where are you, boy? Come on, Chili! Chili! Where could he be? I don't know. He must have... I hope he didn't go to the neighbor. I don't know. I hope he's okay. Watch your step, it's wild through here. Okay. Oh, that's so thick that can, ah, ah! Fire ants. Oh, fire ants. Chili, where are you? Oh, hey, look, it's Art. Art, have you seen Chili Dog? No, I haven't. Oh, what? my God. Did he get out again? <laughs> he, I, he got away from me. I was using the machete. I wasn't paying attention. Oh, you're finally girdling that tree. You know, I got yeah. bit by fire ants. I don't know what to do. Anyways, why? You know, what are you doing about the tree? How's 
Oh well, um, it's, it's an invasive weed tree. That Another can, invasive weed tree. That can displace the natural flora of the area, so we're trying to prevent that. Good. And oh, so thank you. One way to do it is, is by girdling, which is removing the bark all the way around the tree in a big band, and that'll prevent nutrients from reaching the roots or the leaves going either way. Oh. Yeah. And so the tree can slowly die, which I hate to kill something slowly, but it's it's an invasive tree, so. Yeah, well, when it comes And it kills other trees, so. Yeah, <laughs> that's. By displacing them and taking them out of the their environment, so. Yeah, that's the problem with invasives, is it affects the biodiversity. Yeah. And the right. ecosystem, so a lot of the native plants will not be able to survive. Do you know what to do about the fire ants? You I know, don't. I, yeah, I, I do. Have a solution, you I have a solution. I was um, thinking of getting an anteater. Do you have a better idea? Because well, that that sounds like more fun. <laughs> yeah, but but, but I you know, get another animal to take care of those. <laughs> I know. Hot. But uh, well, yeah, the, I, um, another neighbor showed me a, a, a method oh. uh, using a. Um, it's not an actual herbicide or uh, insecticide. It yeah. doesn't kill them with poison. It's a hormonal type can, of Can we go to your house? Can, can you put the sure. girdling away for a oh, minute? I yeah, really need sure. to get something. I'm worried about the fire ants. Okay. Okay, we're going to go to your house, Art. Alrighty, well yeah, I can show you oh, it, a little bit about what wonderful. it's all about. Mm. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, that would be great because I have them on my land too. No, do no, you? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah I, everybody's can. getting them. It's up to us to do something. Yeah. Well, this, this is supposed to be a real good method. Oh, of, God. Uh, okay. Yeah, they always the most bite effective. In the worst place. The heard. worst. You know it is. This is the worst place they could bite me. I, I, I know all the time. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. Well, we're coming over. You want to lead the way? Oh, sure. Yeah, we'll or is there another oh, way? To well, go. there's a way through there, but it's a little. It's a little jungle. Yeah, Let's yeah. go this way. Let's make yeah, it easy on ourselves. On. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. Oh, I'm so happy. Okay. Uh, well, for the little red fire ants. I've been using a product called Tango, and uh, what it does is uh, you put it in a bait, uh, and we use peanut butter as the bait, and uh, the workers consume it, and they also take it to the queen, which renders her fertile, so that she pr uh, doesn't produce larvae, and so you eliminate them in that way, and it's sort of a bit of a procedure to mix it. Uh, I've got a recipe here, uh, which uh, will make one large squirt bottle full. How much does that cover? It's round. You're, you supposed, you're supposed to use only this much to cover your whole property. Wow! So uh, you got to be quite conservative as you distribute it over your property, uh, just mostly in all the target areas where you see the most activity. Uh, where you think they might be. Um, definitely you can go under your house if you have a close to your house or around your house and squirt it at about five foot intervals, just little globs of it. Oh. And um, you can squirt it uh, around the base of trees, a couple different places around each tree, and up in the foliage where they go. Yeah, they tend to drop down and then they bite you. Yeah, up. so you, <laughs> get it, you can squirt it up in the foliage and uh, They'll find it. Uh, I know they find it if I leave peanut butter on my counter they're there. <laughs> so you don't actually have to find a mound or anything. This is just not really. Problem. I mean, if you do, if you do know where a mound is, it make it convenient for them and, totally. and distribute it around there, uh, and that will uh, certainly maybe make the process a little easier for them to yeah to become sterile. Great. So uh, what you do is you you mix. Uh, um, Two cups of hot water, and the water has to be quite quite warm. Not probably, boiling, but not boiling, but quite probably warm. almost as you're mixing it. Uh, okay. uh, you mix uh, you mix that with uh, uh, three cups of uh, any kind of vegetable oil. I prefer corn oil, but any kind of vegetable oil will work. Okay. Um, also, uh, four uh, teaspoons or tablespoons of tango. And I've got it in this little bottle. This is not the bottle it comes in. So does it come in a liquid form then? Yeah, it comes in this form here, which is looks like milk. Oh, okay. Um, 
So you put the measured amount of that along with hot water, corn oil, and you mix uh, one to two teaspoons of uh, xanthan gum. That's a thickening agent. Wow. So that, uh, what it does is the warm water will keep it uh, uh, loose enough to go through the squirt bottle without clogging. And Great. then once it, it's squirted into locations, it will, uh, it will harden and stay there. It's less uh, vulnerable to a little bit of rain. You know, it won't wash away quite as easily. Oh, okay. um, and then the bait uh, is a half a cup of peanut butter. Just use your cheap peanut butter, not the expensive natural kind. <laughs> right. And uh, to, you got to mix it very thoroughly. I use a, just a, a battery operated drill with a, a, a little whisk that I got at the thrift store. <laughs> uh, homemade egg beater. Yeah, I have a little <laughs> egg beater, you know. That's great. Uh, How ingenious. This, uh, this works quite well, and you got to do it quite thoroughly, you know. I mean, just, you know, just really mix it real thoroughly because yeah. if you don't, if there's any lumps in it, it'll clog the sprayer. And you don't want to do that. And so, uh, once it's mixed, the sprayer is filled, then go out there and distribute it uh, about every four feet uh, in the trouble areas and anywhere else you might suspect. Uh, and if you can, squirt it under things where, where it is protected from the rain, where it lasts longer, mm -hmm. that's, that's fine. Nice. And uh, you should go four to six weeks between applications. And that should take care of the fire ant problem. Um, right. So it's basically you want to do it when it's dry and sunny. Right. Water, so that right. has That's a chance to work. Exactly. That, those are the best conditions to do it under. Uh, and uh, uh, this is supposed to be a very efficient way to get rid of them. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Especially since it's natural and it's not poisonous. It's a little more natural. Yeah, it's not poisonous. Well, you don't want to expose your pets to it. You don't want to make them sterile. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> or yourself, maybe. But uh, it certainly. Uh, a lot better than using actual uh, insecticides with actual poison in it. Okay. Uh -huh. It's better on the environment. All right. And that's about it. Great. Well, I learned a lot today. Thanks for sharing all that great info. Oh, well, you're welcome. I, I hope it'll work for you. Yeah, I'm going to have you come over and apply some. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll do 